We're watching films on the toilet Cause that's what dads have to do When the movie's unsuitable for your kids Then pretend you need a number two If you need a break from your family or spouse There's a lavatorial picture house Watch Terminator 2 while you're sitting on the loo Enjoy the whole of Rambo 4 with your trouts on the floor We're watching films on the toilet How about you? So Ben, no celebrities have had any physical fights this week. I know, it's been such a boring week. What would be your dream celebrity fight? Vin Diesel and The Rock. Yes. Because they have proper beef. Hmm. And I I think it could be a good brawl. They're both big lads. I think uh, it'd be pretty one-way traffic, that fight, wouldn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming The Rock would destroy Vin Diesel. Yeah, he probably would. And again, I don't mind. I found myself on Vin Diesel's Instagram the other day. No idea how yeah. much. I think it was because he he was talking about Will Smith. Like it's interesting. Like he he has really developed this reputation as kind of like a screen tough guy. Yeah, he's actually kind of doughy. Like he's not. If you look at like The Rock, gigantic but also totally ripped. A full beast. Whereas, like, Vin Diesel is kind of like... It's like the muscliest guy from your local gym. He's that <laughs> level of muscular, which is yeah. somewhat muscular, but also mainly fat. The Rock has, like, an unattainable physique. Like, he's just yes. crazy. A few months good work. I could probably get to uh, Vin Diesel level hedge. Yeah, if you just shaved your head, I think you'd be pretty much there. If I shaved my head, did a few press-ups and ate a few more pies, I would be there. <laughs> He's, it's really not that impressive. Yeah, but the thing is, Eamon, it's not always the most muscular guys that are the hardest. No. He may be legit tough, just not with the physique that The Rock has. I, I know what you're saying, but I always find then that the tough guys are, are like skinny as fuck. Lean. Yeah, with just the crazy eyes, just kind of like Begbie in, <laughs> in train spotting intensity. Yeah. Like they're the ones you really yes. have to look out for. But like the UFC heavyweights, most of them... Don't look like The Rock. No, and I could chin them all. That's what I'm saying. I know you could, Eamon. You're, you're a hard alpha male. I've looked at the state of their bodies. They're somewhat doughy. Therefore, I'm assuming I could kick them in. <laughs> kick them in. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's at the end of the fights. They, they say that, don't they? Mm. Cut, stop, stop. He's kicked him in. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Winner by kicking in... <laughs> Eamon! Um, anyway, welcome to Watching Films on the Toilet, a podcast in which two dads, myself and Eamon, uh, I'm Ben, talk about movies that we watched on the toilet because we can't watch them with our young children. This day, on this day, we are going to be discussing 1991's Point Break, starring Keanu Reeves and Pat Swayze, directed by Catherine Bigelow, who used to be married... To our man, Jimmy Cameron. We haven't discussed him for a while, have we? We haven't. Quick update on James Cameron. I made the bold claim that he was contemplating killing one of his nephews or nieces. He countered. He did. I doubled down. Yeah. There were a few more back and forth. Where we're at now yeah. is that I'm pretty sure that he kidnaps and or eats dogs and cats. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we, we have a guest joining us today as well which is very exciting. We haven't had one of those for a while. Mm. So we will be talking to him about Point Break. Uh, a man named Tails. It's not his real name, mm. but it's his uh, Twitter handle and uh, by which he would like to be known. So we will respect that because that's what we do. He is a digital artist and a real nice chap. I'll be the judge of that. I know Tails. Um, Eamon hasn't met him before. So I always, I always feel a little anxious going in when that's the case. But I'm sure Eamon will make him feel very welcome. You're going to be going there super aggressive, trying to intimidate this guy straight off the bat. Good. Well, that's nice for him. I'm sure he'll look forward to that. Uh, anyway, so do we have any correspondence this week, Eamon? We do. Uh, why don't you start? Because last week you said the one that isn't funny starts first, so you can go this week. Oh, we can always buck the trend. <laughs> He's so quick. He's so quick. Dear watching films on the toilet. I listened with great interest to your last podcast and found your confusion over a particular matter all too familiar. I thought I'd write in and shed a bit of light on this issue since I'm something of an expert. I'm talking, of course, about your protracted conversation about glorials and the specific <laughs> sizes required for them. Oh, my. I am a glory... Yeah, you're going to hear that word a <laughs> lot. <laughs> I am a glory... 
Cult <laughs> artisan and create besp- bespoke glory holes for a number of high end <laughs> clients. Before I worked on the production side of glory holes, I was a glory hole <laughs> salesman. So I think it's fair to say I know a thing or two about glory holes. Oh First, if it's a glory <laughs> hole in a woman's toilet, we don't make the hole bigger, as Eamon speculated. Rather, we construct the glory hole on a bias, the canted angle ensuring ease of access. <laughs> Side note, Eamon categorically wrong there. Not sure why Ben got the idea that Eamon is always right in his letters, because as I just said, he's wrong. <laughs> I guess that must make Ben some kind of dickhead. <laughs> also, glorials never have a sliding door mechanism. As Ben said, they're difficult to find at the best of times, no matter how desperately you look for them. So we would never hide them away. Us glorial artisans are proud of our work and want them, want them fully on display for everyone to see. Oh. I can only speculate the hole in the news article was some kind of portal for the safe passage of snacks. Anyway, hope that cleared that up. Yours sincerely, William Gladstone, then in brackets, the glory hole maker, not the old prime minister. <laughs> Tidied up a number of things there, didn't it, Ben? Oh, I don't, I'm not quite sure I'd start there, Eamon. Um, the glory holes. Well, it seems like the, the right place to start. Well, first of all, the word you've said again and again is actually an old name for a cupboard under the stairs. I know that because when we went looking for a new house, uh, the one I'm in at the moment, the lovely lady who was showing us around, who lived here, we looked upstairs, looked in the bedrooms, uh, looked in the lounge, and then she said, oh, uh, would you would you like to see the glory <laughs> um, And <laughs> I couldn't look at my wife. Um, <laughs> Because I started sort of shuddering and it turned out she just was showing us the cupboard under the stairs. That was what she <laughs> she called it. And from this day on, that is what it is known as. Number two, it turns out you're not always right in the letters that yeah. we receive. So that's mm. it's funny that after I said that, we receive a letter the next week, kind of proving me wrong again. It's proving you wrong. That. It was proving yeah. me wrong, but also proving you wrong. I suppose it could be quite offensive to me, actually. Yeah, it caught you a dick. <laughs> Yeah, he did. And, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, but very, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I've learned a lot. I didn't realise that it was one of, like one of these old-fashioned kind of crafts. No. <laughs> it's one of those old jobs, a bit like hairdressers. People are always going to need glory holes, aren't they? they uh, always. <laughs> it's a, it's a, lot, a lot like a, a hairdresser, a lot like yeah. that. Do you have a a letter? Uh, Last time we reviewed the film Ambulance. um, And in my exploration, I managed to dig up something, which I think the whole world is going to be very interested to hear. So it was a recording of Michael Bay on the set of Ambulance. Oh. So I'm going to play it to you now. This is a world first. This is proper news. I've recorded it, so I'll just play it by the speaker. Hopefully you can hear it. Hey, everyone. Everyone, everybody shut the f*** up. No, okay? What are you... No, it, it... Bang, bang, bang. Jake, get over here. No, not here. There. Do you have any f***ing idea? Bang, bang, okay? It's called acting. F*** you. No, Jake. Where's the... You better be f***ing ready. Start running, Jake. Don't you f***ing look at me. No, like a... Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that... What the f***? Are we ready? No! When it... Yeah! Okay? Don't you talk to me. After three. One. Two. Cocaine. That's right. Don't f*** this up, Jake. Okay? Action! <laughs> so... There we oh go. <laughs> God, my ears have gone weird. <laughs> so that was um, a real live recording of Michael Bay on the set of Ambulance. <laughs> Sounded like he's very cross with Jake Gyllenhaal and trying to communicate, you know, what he wanted, but in a very um, <laughs> fractured way. So that's out there uh, in the world now. Um, best of luck to Michael Bay. Maybe that lend his career. Oh, I hope so. That would be good, wouldn't it? Mm. I hope he addresses this. I hope he gets into <laughs> Michael. We'd love to hear your side of the story. Very strong correspondences this week. It's all, it's all downhill from here. Those are the only bits that are written. That's it. The rest of it is just improv bullshit, which I've, I've made my disdain for very clear. <laughs> That's right. All right. 
Eamon, you got any toilet news? Sort of. So, public toilets. From Old Loo to Tiny Newport Theatre. When Janet Martin spent £70,000 buying an old public loo with dreams of making it a tiny theatre, she knew she wasn't throwing money down the toilet. So, basically, uh, an insane woman in Wales (laughs) bought a toilet, spent all her inheritance on converting it into a theatre... And now she's trying to justify her mania. So she bought a public toilet and she converted it into a theatre. Into a theatre. And they have a, uh, a still of, of the old toilets. And it's a shame, really. It's like a old-fashioned urinals, which are sort of concave. They look beautiful. I'd much rather have seen that than a, a dumb old theatre. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, do you want to go and see a play? No. I think theatre is the worst art form. I went to see uh, One Man, Two Governors. Mercifully, not when James Corden was in it. But everyone was going, oh, this understudy, he's, he's owned this role. This is fa- this is one of the funniest things. Honestly, you'll see, you'll piss your pants. It's the funniest thing you'll ever see. Well, if you did it in this theatre, it would be fine. Yeah, it'd be fine. And yeah. I had about, like, three drinks by this point. So anything could really make me laugh. Yeah. And it was the lamest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> It's just like, f***ing hell, Mock the Week is better than this. And that was like the funniest play of all time, inverted commas. I don't think plays are for us. No. Some people like the theatre. I'm uh, new. I'd rather sit on the toilet and watch a movie. Thanks. 100% every time. 100%. So if you this like, woman... Hang on, I'm not finished. Okay. <laughs> I want to just lay into the, the people who like theatre, if you don't mind. If you like theatre and you're listening yeah. to this, turn it off now. This is... <laughs> You don't deserve this. <laughs> not allowed. This is definitely better than theatre. This is not better than films, but it's better than theatre. Yeah, this is legit. better than any play you'll ever see. Uh, let's get stuck in to Point Break. Let's get stuck in to Point Break, okay? And now we're going to be joined <laughs> by Tails. <laughs> okay, all right. Hello, Tails. Hello. Who's that? Let us in, Tails. All ah, right, come on in. Come on. Oh, that's easy. Thank you. Oh, This toilet is massive. <laughs> I think the pool table's a bit excessive. <laughs> I like that idea. Would that be possible? I think you'd end up hitting the basin, wouldn't you, when you're, when you're kind of going backwards with your, your cue. <laughs> Might be accidental flushes that you didn't account for. I like the idea that someone's got a, the toilet just big enough to... To, in theory, get in a, a pool table, but they've not given themselves any margin at all. <laughs> Just wasn't practical in the end. <laughs> <laughs> you could have like a, like rails so that you can move the toilet around the outside of the pool table. Hang on, a toilet on wheels? Or on a track, on a track, that's what I'm going for. Oh no, that's better, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> on wheels. What was I thinking? <laughs> Tails is immediately regretting doing this. <laughs> We're already talking about... Pool tables in the toilet. Young Ben actually was like, no, you, you, you must watch whatever we're going to talk about on the toilet. And I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I still stay? Is that okay? Have, or have I broken the rules? Okay, uh, cool. I will have to check the bylaws, but I mean, we can make an exception. Maybe we should just have a talk about it privately. I mean. <laughs> sure. Tell you what, if you don't mind, Tails, can you mute yourself? We'll have a chat. And if you want to make any (laughs) comments, just write them in on the uh, the group chat. Yeah, no problem. No, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Okay, so you didn't watch Point Break on the toilet. How how did you watch it? In my current inflatable bed, because my my real one hasn't been delivered. Uh, Also on a telly that is angled far too high (laughs) because when I got my housemate to put my rack up, uh, he put it too high. So I guess that proves if you want a job doing properly... You really should do it yourself. <laughs> uh, what I got out of watching the film was a really bad nick. Oh, oh no. Eamon, how did you watch Point Break? Watched it on the toilet. Obviously. <laughs> I did start watching it in the, uh, the kitchen whilst I was doing my kids' dinner. And it, it was during the bit where they raid that Nazi surfer's house. And there's uh, quite a lot of swears. Oh, yeah. So even though they were in the other room, I had to turn it off quick sharp. <laughs> yeah, I also watched it. In the toilet, because uh, that's, you know, that's what we do, Tails. That's what we do. Part of the, part of the format. You wouldn't understand, but... <laughs> not bad, not bad. So, on the show, we do, I do something called The Summer We, which is a very brief summary of the film for people that might not have seen it for a while. In order for me to do that, you need to have consumed quite a lot of liquid 
to keep me going for the time it takes you to do a long week. So what have you had a drink for me, please, Tails? Whatever they were drinking in the film. Point break. <laughs> this is a good start. <laughs> no, because, do you, so look, I've already, can I already speak about one of my pet peeves of the film? Yeah, yeah. Right, so you remember the guy that was in Scrubs? John C. McGinley. That's the one. Love him. Great actor, mm. sometimes. Uh, he gives uh, young Johnny Utah quite the rub down about his diet. Yes, he does. No smoking, no chicken, no this, no that. And then they spend the next 20 minutes of the film drinking Bud Light and uh, smoking and eating Chinese. So He didn't listen to his boss, did he? He didn't, no. He clearly no. didn't get the memo. So what did you drink? <laughs> Bud Light, mate. Bud Light. All right. We'll go with Bud Light. <laughs> Perfect. How many? How many Bud Lights? Seven. Seven. <laughs> nice. I love that. And how long did that give me? How how long did you have to do a wee for? Half the film. Oh. <laughs> All right. So I've got about 45 minutes about to, an hour. Yeah. to do this. That's good. I think I can do it. Well, I better set a clock just in case. Okay, we good? Yeah. So Keanu Reeves is a young know-it-all FBI agent called Johnny Utah, who's partnered with Gary Boosie, a loose cannon who no one takes seriously, who plays a loose cannon who no one takes seriously. <laughs> They're tasked with finding the gang behind a string of bank robberies who dress as ex-presidents and then, according to Boosie, go surfing. Totally radical. So Keanu goes undercover as a laid-back surfer dude, which he takes to surprisingly well and quickly falls for his surf instructor, Laurie Petty, along with her ex boyfriend surf guru Patrick Swayze tubular Keanu gets close to Swayze's crew and eventually realizes they're the gang behind the robberies not bodacious then at a botched stakeout Keanu blows his cover wipe out so the gang take him on a righteous parachute jump while they kidnap his girlfriend and Keanu is forced to accompany them on one last gnarly job everything goes hella wrong Boosie gets shot most of the gang die Swayze escapes after another parachute jump but thankfully Keanu saves the girl Awesome. Finally, a little while later, Keanu tracks down Swayze and fights him before he has a go at surfing a tidal wave. The end. Wow. So there okay, we go. Okay, so that was a minute and 16 seconds. So you had approximately 58 minutes remaining. <laughs> Pretty big buffer there. All right. Now, Tails, do you remember watching Point Break for the first time? Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I was about 10 years old the first time I saw that. I think my um, I got an older sister who was obsessed with Keanu Reeves at the time, so whatever she watched, I watched, basically. You said to me that you remembered the trailer on Channel 4. I do, I do. It was, I am an FBI agent oh that's right so you just had it. that ringing round yeah, and round yeah. and round <laughs> have either of you guys been surfing before yes uh, my wife got me um a surfing lesson before my daughter was born okay and she took a photo it's the only time i actually managed to get up on the board i am stood exactly upright with my feet together i look like a like a fucking footman <laughs> I was just upright for about two seconds before I toppled into the water. You got up, though. Yeah. Also, they gave me their biggest wetsuit, which I broke because I was so fat. And then they gave me they gave me another one. And it was just like, it was, it was like, I mean, I don't even think it was made for a human. I think it was like a, the sheathing from like a massive pipe. So it wasn't the greatest experience for me. Have you been surfing, Tails? Have you done it before? I've attempted it. It was, it was very much like um, young John Utah's first attempt. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I was more of a bodyboarder, you know? Just go on, yeah. on that little wave. Yeah, yeah same. Bodyboarding, I've never tried surfing. <laughs> I could definitely never imagine you surfing, I'm sorry to say. All I've heard is it's just really hard. And he learns to do it in an afternoon. He does, with the, with the help of young Laurie Petty. Yeah, he was a very good instructor. Yeah, I just didn't buy that at all. Like, they spent about an hour on the beach. And she was just like going, oh, you got up too slow, your fish food. It's like, <laughs> mind you, maybe I should have done that in my lesson. Maybe that's where I went wrong. I mean, that and being sort of grotesquely overweight as well. <laughs> What helped Johnny to get, you know, accepted by the crew was his um, his football skills. So he was able to catch the American football, wasn't he? Which impressed them all. Oh, God, I love that bit. Yeah. When, you know, like the moment he sealed the deal when Swayze turns yeah. around and goes, nice catch. 
and like looks at him like yeah. he's like gazing upon some like hidden treasure. It's incredible. <laughs> Which of us would be the best undercover agent in that way? Like what skill do you have? that might ingratiate you with a with a gang. Mm -hmm. For you, Tails, you have your gambling skills. You could beat them at poker and they'd be like, this guy's in, right? Either that or they'd keep the shit out of me. I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> It could go either way. Yeah. It's, a, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. It? it is. And Eamon, you're very good at tennis. So if it was some kind of like middle class tax evasion gang, you could infiltrate that quite well, couldn't you? I could do that. Also, I think I can um, I could infiltrate a pretty uh, rough, tough street gang with uh, <laughs> my vibrant racist language. <laughs> oh, and you've got that massive um, gothic font tattoo on your back as well. It says baller, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's just a giant yeah. eagle. I don't know why it says a ball underneath an eagle. It's a terrible decision. I, was, I was, got really scared. And he was halfway through by the time I sort of like really changed my mind. It's interesting though, because Ben, this did sort of happen to you, didn't it? Except it wasn't surfing, was it? It was crown green bowls. <laughs> I had to infiltrate the crown green bowls gang, mm. but I used my climbing skills to impress them. Mm. One of the bowls got thrown over a fence because yeah. one of the men got carried away and they're like, oh, we're never going to get that back. And I managed to scramble up the wall, mm. get the bowl back. And the guy said, whoa, that guy can climb. Mm -hmm. And from then on, I was I was in. Yeah, I like the fact that you sort of abandoned the improv there and, and focused on fact, which is that you are, <laughs> I think you're just desperate to get in, into the conversation, the fact you are pretty good at climbing. I thought I'd had no skill that would allow me to be accepted into a gang. But thinking about it, I am I am all right at climbing. So why play that down? Ben, uh, why don't you tell us about being good at climbing? F*** <laughs> 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 off, Eamon. Um, right. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's move on. The bank robbers in this film wear dead president masks. If we were to mm. do a bank robbery, which prime minister's face would you wear? That's a great question. The ex-prime minister's, that would be the name of our gang. So which prime minister's face would you wear as a mask? I think I would choose Benjamin Disraeli. Okay, any reason? Kick-ass name, kick-ass guy. Yeah, and, and probably not as recognisable as some of the other prime ministers. I mean, the obvious one is Thatcher, isn't it? But would work. Well, obviously, if you've got a giant head, that would be perfect because of her enormous hairdo. You could you could hide a huge head inside that mask. You could. How, how big's your head, Eamon? Pretty big. I usually have to get... Anytime I'm wearing a hard hat, which is not that frequently, I always have to uh, take back the one I'm given and go, have you got anything bigger than this, mate? Like that wetsuit as well. Same deal, yeah. It's like the biggest one you've got, it's not sufficient. Give me the secret big one that you keep to one side. <laughs> Oh, you need your secret big hat. Go and get it. Is that going to be the name of this episode, Secret Big Hat? <laughs> I think it's sorted. Yeah. Tails, have you got... who Whose face would you like to wear for the bank robbery that we are going to do? I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not big on, on politics. And the person who I thought I would, because he was really ugly and I thought it would scare everybody, was uh, Gordon Brown. But it wasn't actually him. <laughs> it was the guy that got uh, egg chucked at him once. And sorry, that probably doesn't narrow it down. Oh, John Prescott. Was he, but he wasn't a Prime Minister, was he? He was Deputy Prime Minister. Okay, so we're close. You, could, you can do John Prescott if you like. We're not... Oh, cool. Cool. Cause just because I think he, he, you know, he's ugly as sin and I don't think anybody would mess with me if I walk through the door. <laughs> I'd just be like, horrifying. <laughs> he lamped out that guy you threw an egg at him, didn't he? He's, he's having none of that. Oh, yeah, he whacked him, didn't he? Mm. But what about you, Ben? Um, I think I... Theresa May? That's, yeah. Well, don't interrupt. You ruined it. <laughs> Sorry. All right, fine. I'm not going to choose Theresa May. Uh, David Cameron. David Cameron. The most unassuming. He just fades into the background, doesn't he? So while you two get the spotlight of the robbery, I could David Cameron it in the background, not really get <laughs> spotted at all, and then slope out. Kind of like, uh, is this your Brexit analogy, Ben? Yeah, works pretty well. Caused Brexit and then uh, slunk out of there. And then we could get um, John Major to be the driver. Yeah, John Major. Yeah, the actual John Major, yeah. Oh, the actual John Major. The getaway driver. Yeah, he's not up to much, is he? No, he's not. Do you think you, if push come to shove, you could rob a bank? Do you think you've got it in you? I don't think so. I think I'd just get really anxious and probably throw up. What's your number? You must have a number. How much would it take me to do one? Oh, that's a good question. Um, 
100 million. What about you? I hadn't thought this through, but I was just thinking about your 100 million. How are you going to keep that secret? Well, I'd wash all the money. I'm just going to pop this in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then, like, what's the point? If it's any less than that, it's not going to sustain the lifestyle that I <laughs> that I require. You get through submarines that are way too quick. I do. I fly helicopters into stuff just for lol. So just for fun. Yeah. So it's not going to work. What about you? What's your number, Tails? I don't think I have one. I don't think I could ever do it. I think I think it would have to. And I don't know what the thing would be, but somebody would have to threaten me. Go mm. if you do not rob this bank, X, Y, and Z are going to die, or I'm going to tell the world about like Johnny Utah. Ah, yeah, exactly. Well, Eamon, a number? Do you have one? I mean, I'm not... I don't have that much going for me. There's not like there's a lot at stake <laughs> if, if I do go to prison. That is actually true. I don't know, actually. It depends on how much time I'd have to plan. Mm. Like, if I had loads of time to plan it and like get all the information and stuff, part of me thinks, like, oh, maybe just give it a go. Do you know what I mean? Just for fun. Just say you don't... Like bucket list. Yeah, exactly. I'd wait until I'm about 80. Yeah. And then go and rob a bank. Well, that makes sense. What would you use to to rob the bank? What would you use a a weapon? Would you imply that you had a weapon, or would you just use a style mini gun, <laughs> like a helicopter gun, like the one Arnie has in T two? That's right. I walk eighty years old, walk in with a mini gun, <laughs> <laughs> not firing, just set it off, set the spin off. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, do you remember Jesse Ventura has one in Predator, doesn't he? Does. He does, yeah. He sort of has other bullets in his backpack. Yeah. I, I'd have a similar setup. <laughs> so I'd spend like a good sort of five years just like r- like roiding out, just getting like really hench, 80 year old. I'll get like Stallone leather jacked. Stallone leather jacked. Yeah. yeah. Walk in, mini gun, fire it up. Yeah. Then be like in my barely comprehensible, like roided out voice. Give me all your money, or I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna blow you all the way. You've got the baller tattoo on your chest, so you could go in topless. That would look pretty badass. That's right. Although you probably wouldn't be able to see it behind the uh, the mini gun, so I'd have to get leaflets printed <laughs> and then hand those out to show them what, what, how I looked. Tails, what would you use to rob a bank? I'd cosplay as the xenomorph from <laughs> from Aliens, nice. and yeah. I would just walk in there. I would be holding, you know, a bag of loot with the, with the dollar sign on him, on it. Yes. <laughs> I would point. Yeah. Classic. I'd point to the banker. Yeah. I'd point to the bag, and if they didn't know, you know, if they did not comply, then my second mouth would come out and pour acid over everybody, probably ruining the money in the process. But uh, it'll be fun. No one's going to mess with a xenomorph, are they? Exactly. No way. Now, this film is originally called Johnny Utah. Oh, really? They came up with the name Point Break on set. And apparently it was also about skateboarding to start <laughs> with. So I've, I've come up with some names of movies mm-hmm. based on like the Johnny Utah vibe. And yeah. I want you to tell me what sport would be involved in this undercover cop film. You ready? Okay. What yeah. about if the film was called Wayne Cardiff? Darts. <laughs> I'd watch a Point Break about darts, would you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it would be more static, wouldn't it? A load of slow-mos by darts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe Zack Snyder could direct it. <laughs> <laughs> there wouldn't be like the skydiving sequence. It would be like uh, chugging a yard of ale. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what the darts equivalent would be. You can do it. <laughs> What's his name? Wayne. You can do it, Wayne. <laughs> Okay, that works. Darts is good. Uh, what about um, if it was called David Plymouth? What sport might be involved? Do they all have second names which are places in Great Britain? Maybe. Johnny Utah. I'm just making it more local. Oh, right. I see what you mean. David Plymouth. Uh, badminton. Yeah, that would work. I thought maybe just kicking people in. <laughs> giving people a good kicking. No. No, it's badminton, isn't it? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, Ben, it's, it is badminton, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one, I'm breaking my uh, pattern slightly. Ken, Texas. Inbreeding. In- <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Instead of catching the football, he just shows his sister. And they're like, whoa, you're one of us now. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll pitch them. We'll send them off to Ron Howard. He's our Hollywood connect, isn't he? Good old Ron. He might be up for some of those ideas. Yeah. And then at the end of the film, as I said, uh, Bodhi goes surfing on a tidal wave. 
And it's the inference so, that he yeah. dies. I think that was it. It was the choice between being locked up or dying. But let me ask you this, because this is another bone I've got to pick mm-hmm. with Keanu. Mm. He goes all the way to find him, yep. finds him, lets him off. Now look, I get he goes, oh, well, if I let him off, he's not going to make it, he's going to die. And that's maybe what he wants. He would have known that before with all this research of surfing and hearing his, you know, him go on about it for the last 90 minutes of the film. Right. So He should have just gone there. Also, I think you can't pursue someone so doggedly and then go, yeah, do you know what? Off you go. Yeah, you search for years and then like you find, you know, you have the fight, you punch each other, you cuff him and then he just goes... Please, can I go and surf? Oh, no worries, mate. Let me just get the key. Let me just get the key. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please, mate. Can yeah. I go? <laughs> go on, then. Yeah, but it's not about that, is it? He's not looking to arrest him. He's looking for him because he loves him. And he realises that ultimately he can't have him. So he has to let him go. It's heartbreaking. Deep. <laughs> All right, good, good. Well, would we flush this film down the toilet like... Bodhi gets flushed away in the sea <laughs> at the end. Or would you fish it out like Keanu Reeves is fished out of the sea by Laurie Petty, his surf instructor, at the beginning of the film? Um, I would fish this film out. It is quite ridiculous, but I think there's a lot of interesting subtext to it. And it, it's pretty extreme. I like how far it goes. Um I don't understand why Keanu Reeves still has a job at the end, but I like the fact that, you know, he's taken on a bank robbery. Um, it, it really does take it to the limit. And yeah, for that reason, I really enjoyed it. I would uh, fish it out of the bowl. No. What about you? Let's say you, Eamon, and then we'll go with Tails. Tricky, because I hate agreeing with anything that you say. Your pretentious reading of this film. I'm like, oh, this... Oh. By the way, it's not that clever going, I think they're gay. Like, that's not that, you're not that smart by making that observation. It's like, yeah, of course, of course they might be. Look at the way they're looking at each other. It's, it's really heavily implied. You're not that clever. I'm not saying I am. <laughs> Let's not pretend like, just, oh, I'm the only person that's watched this film and thought that. No, I'm not. Yeah, that's I'm just kind saying, of, kind of I've read about though, it, it and I thought that was an interesting take, you know, which, you which resonated. It's all, you, it's all you want to talk about. <laughs> Oh, um, I'm on. Tell us. <laughs> I probably would fish this one out because the way she shoots action, it's really visceral. Like, and the, the the first skydiving sequence, I thought was genuinely um, exhilarating. I think it's really mm. you can sort of tell that they weren't when they had the close ups that they're clearly on like a, a stage or something. But she shot it so Swayze well. Swayze did a lot of jumps. Swayze did do his jumps. Well, I assumed that bit where he says goodbye to Johnny and then leans out was for real because that looked yeah. amazing. A lot of the dialogue I thought was very hammy, but I, I think I'd convinced myself I'd seen this story, mm. this film, even though I hadn't. And I sort of thought it was going to end in a completely different way. So I was really pleasantly surprised in, in the way that it had ended. So yeah, I'm, an, annoyingly, I'm going to have to agree with you. Ben. Okay, fish it out. Well, Tails, if you decide to fish it out, then this film will go in the tank of glory. Ooh. If you decide to flush it, yeah. then it will not. So nah, uh, it's it, quite a lot of responsibility. It's a clean sweep, mate. Going to fish it out purely for the lawnmower scene. Ooh. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Loved it, mate. Loved it. Absolute cult classic. Now that I'm watching it, you know, and I've become more of a bit of a film snob, if things <laughs> annoy me. But I'm not going to let that take away from my uh, childhood memories. That's good. That's good. So it was a bit of nostalgia. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend if you loved this back in the day, watching it over and over and over, because then you would end up hating it. <laughs> but for now, we can we can fish it All out. All right. Well, that is exciting. It is. Okay. So that means Point Break is going into the tank of glory. Oh. Now, Eamon, it's been a while since we I had know. a film that's gone in the tank. So we need to recap on what's in there. So we have... The Frighteners, Brawling Cell Block 99, Jackass Forever, The Babadook, and Midnight Run. Oh, jeez. Can't be Jackass Forever, because that's the last one in. I think a new rule for the Tank of Glory is that if we add a film, it has to be in there for at least two rotations. Which means that Jackass Forever and The Frighteners are exempt from expulsion from the tank. So it is between, Mm. and this is difficult... Midnight Run, Brawl in Cell Block 99, and The Babadook. Now, Tails, have you seen any of those movies? I haven't. Yeah, you might just have to decide based on the one that you like the sound of the least. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, the Frighteners, isn't that Michael J. Fox? It's yes. Nah. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> Tells just did the get out of yeah. here gesture. Unfortunately, we can't take it out. Ah. So it's between Midnight Run, Brawling Cellbook 99 and The Babadook. Oh, sorry, you did say that. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, Frighteners, get out of here. Frighteners. <laughs> Eamon, are you leaning towards anything? I am, and I find it very sad to say, but Midnight Run will leave over my cold, dead body. <laughs> um, and it's I do thing. love Brawl, so I probably would say The Babadook, but I, I thought that was a great film. I would agree. Yeah? I love it, but out of those three, I think it's the one I'd get rid of. So that means that The Babadook is being taken out of the Tang of Glory Aww. and in its place we are putting Point Break. Doesn't quite yeah. seem fair, but that's what's happening. It it <laughs> <laughs> but that's happened. I should never have I knew I shouldn't have stopped. I thought you would flush it because that's how you roll, but there we go. There we go. So I'm going to add Point Break to the Tank of Glory. And there it is. It is in. Great. Beautiful. Bobbing nice. around like a surfer on the ocean. Whoa. I think I'm going to keep the Babadook and I'm going to keep it in a little Tupperware oh. because I, I can't stand to see it getting flushed. Not really the rules, but I guess we'll let it slide for now. Just for the Babadook. So there we go. Thank you for joining us, Tails. Thank you very much for having me. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, just, yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Sorry, I, um, you know, only watched half this film and <laughs> didn't watch it on my toilet because there's a pool table in there. It is, yeah. It's easy to get distracted, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, we will leave you uh, from your toilet and let you get back to your business. Awesome. Can you two get out as well, please? Okay, all right. I know I let you right. in, like, pretty without much, but now... It's getting a bit awkward, isn't yeah. it? It's getting a bit much. Yeah. Someone's flipped a Let's switch. Get out of here. Okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> ah, bye. 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 <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs> okay, so that was point break. Yeah. Now it's time for a top five. Okay. Oh, stop yeah. that now. Stop it. Stop it now. Okay. <laughs> All right, I will. Good. Me and Eamon are going to guess each other's top five movies based on a particular theme. In this case, uh, this time, it's Keanu Reeves movies. Mm. So we're going to guess each other's top five Keanu Reeves movies. And then whoever wins gets to choose the next episode's film. Mm -hmm. And whoever loses has to do a forfeit. So uh, I'm going to make my first choice of Keanu Reeves films. All right. I'm going to say Toy Story 4. No, I didn't actually like that film. You didn't like Toy Story 4? No, I thought it was totally extraneous, cynical. It was so perfect after three, and they kind of ruined it. Bruined it? They bruined it. They did not brew it. They did not they brew it. They ruined it. So I'm going to say The Matrix, number one. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. definitely number one. That was a uh, duplicate. All right, your second guess. Speed, and that's a duplicate. Yes. Okay. Real okay. good, old-fashioned action film. P Pop quiz, hot shot. <laughs> that's what he says, isn't it? It's an impeccable it? Dennis Hopper impression. Yeah, Dennis Hopper. Pop quiz, hot shot. That's him. That's Dennis Hopper. Mm. My turn. John Wickington, which I believe is the film. Yes. John Wick. Yeah. Yeah, the first John Wick is on my list. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great. My guess? Your guess, you have to get this right. Bill and Ted? I will give you it, but what? which one? Bogus Journey? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say duplicate. A Scanner Darkly? No. It's time for the scissors, paper, stone. Hang on. How many duplicates did you use? Oh, is it? Just speed. You said the Matrix? I said the Scanner Darkly as well, so I used two. So I win. So you win. Yay! Win, 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 win. I don't know win. You're not a winner. <laughs> I hate that song. Yeah, I know. You know who wrote that? <laughs> who? Um, Stevie Wonder. Did he? Yeah. So was it the B-side to, B to Happy Birthday? the B-side to Happy Birthday. Hey! Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> Great minds. How's it go again? Oh, it's it something like, it's, it's win, 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 you're not a winner. Yeah, it wasn't quite like that the first time around, was it? Ever so slightly different. I bet you ruined, you ruined it with um, Happy Birthday. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday. <clears throat> go on then, what did you have? So, I had The Matrix, yes. John Wick, mm -hmm. Speed, mm -hmm. John Wick 3, 
I had two John Wicks uh, and Bram Stoker's Dracula. Really? Which is ridiculous, but it's rubbish. It's got a special place in my heart. <laughs> oh, that was rubbish. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't Suddenly like became that Josh Widdicombe. Oh, oh, it's horrible when he eats people. Oh, you know when you're watching Bram Stoker's <laughs> Dracula and, and there's the rude bit and your mum walks in. <laughs> oh, no. Rob Beckett's take on it. We've all got a harem of blood drinking <laughs> girlfriends, haven't we? We've all got them. <laughs> We've all got them. Yeah. 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 Oh, good old Josh and Rob. Um, If you're listening, jo- Josh and Rob, f*** off. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Okay. Well, hang on. I'll tell you mine. I don't care. No, no, you don't. I won. You sang two different versions of the wedding song to prove it. <laughs> yeah, I did. I got the Matrix Speed. Stevie Wonders winning. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. It's kind of darkly. This is a tricky one. I would have been amazed if you've got this Parenthood, which is a Steve Martin film, which is really good. Ron Howard. Yeah. yeah. It's a good movie. There's a brilliant bit in there where Steve Martin, it's like a sliding door moment with he's making a decision about his son. And in one version, when he handles it one way, he imagines a future where his son goes on to become like the uh, valedictorian of his class. And it's just like, I love you, dad. This is all because right. of you. And in the other version, the other decision yeah. he makes, <laughs> his son climbs a bell tower with a rifle and starts killing people. He's going, this is all because of my dad. <laughs> Those are really the only two outcomes, aren't they? That is honestly how you feel about any big parenting choice. You think, how much is this going to affect my child? It's, it's terrible. It's That's nerve-wracking. Right. You know when you make <laughs> the wrong choice and your son goes up in a bell tower with a rifle? Oh, oh, oh son, God. why are you shooting everyone? I said <laughs> not to do that. Ah, <laughs> uh, Okay, so what is my forfeit then? So your forfeit is to rob a bank. No problemo. Excellent. And we can use the money to pay for some marketing of our podcast. (laughs) Last episode, you were tasked with stealing an ambulance. What happened? Uh, Yeah, I did it. So here's how it went. Okay, so I had this elaborate plan to fake an injury. I was going to use latex and corn syrup blood and call the ambulance and then hijack it like they do in Michael Bay's film Ambulance. But then, luckily, my next door neighbour got attacked by a dog. Uh, and there's an ambulance parked just outside the house. So I'm going to take that one. Here we go. Oh, it was surprisingly easy. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yeah, nice. Just going to try out the siren. It's quite thrilling. Um, I guess I shouldn't be gone for too long. They probably want to take my neighbour to hospital, but... Uh... Oh! Hello? I think I heard something in the back. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so that was painful, but uh, worthwhile, I suppose? Yeah, well, I guess I'll... Uh... Yeah, I'll agree with that. <laughs> well, you've just heard it. You've just listened yeah, to it. Yeah, decided to keep my reaction really generic. <laughs> Almost as if I've not heard it. Don't know why. Almost as if we recorded this bit before you've done the ambulance thing. But I don't know why you're, I don't know why you're saying yeah. that. You're weird sometimes, Eamon. I think all in all, fair play. <laughs> <laughs> fair play. Fair play. Good. All right, well, that's that. That's mm. that. That's the end of the episode. Oh, listen to us the social media. Listen oh. to us review. God's sake, oh. just do it. Oh, do the thing. Oh. Mm. Don't go and see a play, though. Don't see a play. Don't see a play. We're better than that. This, you know, you know when people say, oh, they're trying to denigrate something, a piece of art, they say, well, it wasn't Shakespeare. Yeah. That, to us, will be a compliment. Yes. If you say, it wasn't Shakespeare, and therefore... <laughs> A worthwhile <laughs> pursuit. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Shakespeare. Or just, it wasn't Shakespeare, thank God. <laughs> well then, there's only one thing left to do. Yeah. What's that? Uh, you do your catchphrase. Oh, yes. yes. Keep flushing. Terrific. Bye.